If you're as tough as you think, get your ass out of here right now and face now and me. Face now me. And face I know what you're after. I know what you're after. I know what you're after. That's Kenny Omega. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 6 of GAW. We have both world champions making appearances tonight. And first, it's Asuka and Charlotte Flair going one-on-one -on -one for the first time since Charlotte Flair deliberately got herself disqualified in their match now a month ago. And with Bash at the Beach approaching... Well, we just don't know whether Charlotte Flair will turn out to be Asuka's challenger. Flair has yet to win the GAW women's title. She'll get to stake her claim against the champion of over a year to open up tonight's episode. And here comes the champ. Charlotte is ready for her. Asuka, one of the most popular wrestlers in GAW male or female she's held this belt for a year i mean what more can you say about her she's been absolutely dominant the strong silent type i guess you could say the attacks between herself and charlotte have gone back and forth since uh the first episode after nitro 9 now oscar will finally get the chance to shut charlotte up after all this the champ is in action right now Champ versus Challenger here. Title is not on the line. It's a 10 minute time limit and Asuka immediately starts off. Whoa, wait a minute. It's Bianca Belair. It's the woman Charlotte beat in 15 seconds at Nitro 9. And Belair, oh my God. Belair is right behind her. Hoists her up. KOD. I don't know how the ref didn't see it. Bel Air helping out Charlotte Flair, and now Charlotte going for the pin on the champ. Charlotte gonna pin the champion? No. Asuka kicks out after Bel Air just 30 seconds into this match. Comes in and hits Asuka with the KOD. Looks like some unfinished business between the champ and former challenger, and it's really given Charlotte Flair the advantage in this match. But you might need more than that to put away the champion. Asuka has not lost in a year. And uh, and we're seeing why here. One of the most loved and one of the most dominant wrestlers in GAW. Asuka going for the pin here, trying to put away the challenger. Charlotte Flair kicks out. Obviously, uh, comparisons to Goldberg. In terms of the dominance showcased, and now Charlotte with a float over DDT. Well, Charlotte is the beneficiary of the assault from Bel Air mid-match, which the referee missed. I'm not sure if if uh, Flair and Bel Air had really communicated about it, or if Bianca may just be doing her own thing here with with Oscar. Either way, Charlotte's trying to take advantage. But the power of the champion. Massive Falcon Arrow, but Charlotte straight back up. Asuka didn't see it and gets hit with the Bulldog. Beautiful job here from Charlotte. Now the spear. Charlotte looking to stake her claim in GAW. Going to pin the champion. Two. Asuka kicks out. Of course, Asuka not the only champion we're going to see in action today. Samoa Joe in our main event of the evening will hopefully finally get a chance. Wow, look at this from Flair. 
figure four head scissors. This is tremendous. Asuka fights her way out. Samoa Joe may finally get a chance to meet the man face to face who's been attacking all of his contenders. Asuka going for the pin, trying to put away the challenger. Charlotte kicks out again. Samoa Joe laid down the challenge last week. Hopefully, whoever it is will be up to it. Asuka looking for the Empress kick and Flair evades. Asuka has so many ways to put you away. The kicks, the submissions. And she's showcased it all. Now Flair's got her up. Beautiful flapjack. Flair does have, of course, the dangerous figure eight. Is she going to go for it here? Doesn't matter. Asuka catches the leg. Spinning heel kick. The champ has the advantage. Asuka from the top rope. Beautiful basement drop kick from the top rope. And now Asuka looking to end things. Laying in the kicks here to the challenger. Charlotte Flair. Beautiful combination from Asuka. Now Asuka looking to stay undefeated against Charlotte Flair. Two. No. Charlotte Flair kicks out of the Empress combination. Wow. Flair really, maybe going for the spear there. Asuka gets the knee up. And now the Empress kick. Hip attack from Asuka. Going straight to the pin on Charlotte Flair. Flair's been impressive so far, and she kicks out again. Asuka is not letting up. And I think that just showcases how dangerous Charlotte Flair really is. Asuka has been non-stop offensively for the last couple minutes. Now maybe it looked like she was going for the Asuka lock, but Flair able to shake her off with the elbow. Asuka still hip attack into the corner. Asuka is pouring it on right now, and I think that is a recognition of how dangerous Charlotte Flair is. And most crucially, Asuka has been able to keep Charlotte Flair away from her legs. We know how Flair, how cerebral she is. She gets it from her dad, of course. This pace from Asuka just absolutely blistering. Now looking to put away the challenger. Charlotte Flair is out. Could have been rope break. I think the referee was pointing at the ropes. Charlotte Flair is such a legacy in the wrestling business. Meanwhile, Asuka. Asuka just going to town. Pound for pound might be the best wrestler in the world today. Certainly, you'd think, probably the best one in GAW. Charlotte doesn't care. Using the rope now. Flair may be looking to put this one away. Lays in the kick. I think we know what's coming. She's used this on Asuka several times. Natural selection. That is a Flair family staple, and now Charlotte looking to pin the champion. She does. Charlotte Flair becomes the first person to beat Asuka in a year, but uh, not without some help. So I think it's worth qualifying that, that Asuka has some losses in the past year, but it's disqualification or count out. Maybe things like that. And I think this will go under that category. The KOD that Bianca Belair hit earlier in the match ended up being too much for the champion to overcome. And yet somehow we end this match with more questions than we started with. Why did Belair get herself involved? Are her and Charlotte conspiring together? I don't know. All I do know is Charlotte Flair has pinned the champion. And with Bash at the Beach getting ever closer, you got to think that Charlotte Flair has her sights on challenging for that title at Bash at the Beach. We've got a stack night coming up. This is just the beginning. Oh,
So we've got a bit of a grudge match here coming up next. It's the Limitless Legion taking on British Strong Style. And if you remember, it was a couple weeks ago in a consolation match uh, from the tag team title tournaments. Both of these teams lost in the first round. And so in a bit of a consolation, British Strong Style actually took a count out against the Limitless Legion. And Keith Lee, Matt Riddle were not happy about that. So we've heard reports of them going back and forth at the training facility, the GAW training facility, social media and whatnot. So now the Limitless Legion will get their match against the team that they feel disrespected them just a couple weeks ago. Taking on the Limitless Legion, as I mentioned, it's British Strong Style, Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn. Taking the count out victory a couple weeks ago. Now, even though we know that the tag team titles will be decided next week on GAW Wednesday Night Storm. What we don't know is who the challengers might be at Bash at the Beach. So you got to feel that every team is still in play. And these are two of the only teams that we've really seen do anything after being eliminated from the tag team title tournament. So there's more than just, than just uh, respect, more than just bragging rights on the line in this match. This match, by the way, contested under Tornado Rules. First one we've seen since Nitro. And I'm excited for this. Again, more on the line than just bragging rights and pride. Match contested under Tornado Rules, of course. First member of a team to secure a pinfall or submission will be declared the winner. No disqualifications. Riddle's got done up already. Bro to sleep from Matt Riddle. Meanwhile, Tyler Bate hits the deadlift German. Oh my God, and then Riddle, kitchen sink on the referee. This is chaos. This is absolute chaos. Wow, no time limit here. Standing shooting star for Tyler Bate. Pete Dunn is up as well as Lee. Dunn wrestles Lee to the ground. We know how great of a technical wrestler Pete Dunn is. Riddle's got Tyler Bate into the reverse DDT, and now Pete Dunn. He's got the pump handle, looking for a bitter end, and he's got it on Keith Lee. And Riddle, he's left the ring, but he sees, and he's able to break that up. He left the ring briefly. And now Dunn, sit out Tombstone on Matt Riddle for his troubles. Pete Dunn is going nuts in this match. Lee has not moved since that bitter end. And Bate able to get Riddle away. That looked painful. Riddle was maybe going for a deadlift power bomb on Dunn. And now Bate. Beautiful combination offense against the legs of Matt Riddle. But Lee, he's gotten up. And now he's turned his attention to Pete Dunn. And he's got him in the spirit bomb. Matt Riddle working on Tyler Bate. Bate with the jawbreaker. Is he going to be able to break it up? And he does. Keith Lee almost ended things with the spirit bomb. The Limitless Legion is going wild right now. Super kick misses from Lee. Riddle disrespecting Dunn on the outside. No count outs. No DQs. But neither of these teams have picked up weapons or anything. It's all about in the ring. X-Plex from Dunn on the inside. Riddle still going to work on Tyler Bennett on the outside. Spinning back fist. And now Dunn launches Keith Lee into the turnbuckle. Dunn admiring his handiwork. Meanwhile, Matt Riddle absolutely taking it to big strong boy. Tyler Bate on the outside. Mishinoku driver from the original pro. Lee escaped what looked like could have been another bitter end. And now Lee, oh my God, German with the bridge. Tyler Bates tied up outside. Is the bridge enough, Keith? Um, uh, Pete Dunn kicks out. Uh, there's four names to keep track of here, folks. <laughs> wow, Keith Lee going up top. This is a 300 plus pounder. Headed up to the top rope. 
while Riddle and Bate are absolutely going at it. We've heard reports of conflict in the training facility. Lee, what a moonsault, but he waited too long. Pete Dunn had the legs up. That probably would have been it for Pete Dunn, another Mishinoku driver from Matt Riddle. Inside the ring, Pete Dunn working on the arm. We know what he does. If you've heard it once, you've heard it a thousand times. It's all about the joint manipulation from Pete Dunn, the, the bruiser weight, and, it, and keeps working on that arm for Keith Lee. Makes a lot of sense. He doesn't want to get caught in that spirit bomb again. Lee's got, Lee's up, X-Plex from Dunn. I don't know if Riddle's going to be able to come make the save. He's too far away. Dunn going for the pin off the X-Plex, and Keith Lee powers out. Matt Riddle does make his way back to the ring. Finally, he and Bate were really going at it for a long time on the outside. Riddle, beautiful sunset bomb on Bate. Turns it into a bro mission. Absolutely brutal. Keith Lee is on the outside trying to keep Bate done away. And that's it. Bate is out. Bate tapped out. Matt Riddle with the bro mission wins the match. A fast and furious tag team match. The first match contested under tornado rules that we've seen since Nitro. Wow, Matt Riddle really was the MVP there. It looked like Pete Dunne had the match won with a bitter end on Keith Lee. Matt Riddle was there. Tyler Bay was able to break things up when Lee hit the spirit bomb and it ends up being Matt Riddle who had been working on Tyler Bay on the outside for a long time in this match, gets it done with the bro mission. The Limitless Legion has earned some respect after the count out. After the count out loss they suffered to British Strong Style and now the Limitless Legion may be putting their names in the hat for a potential title match. Well, he's in action once again. He came up just short against the champion, Kofi Kingston, last episode. But Volter, undeterred, is returning to the GAW ring. Kofi Kingston is not here this week. He has other obligations in his native Ghana. Instead, it will be his most recent challenger, Volter, looking to continue to be a presence in the Intercontinental Championship scene. And taking on the giant Austrian is the man that Kofi Kingston won his Intercontinental title from. Adam Cole with one of the more disappointing Intercontinental title runs that we've seen in GAW. But you gotta respect the guy. Undeterred, Adam Cole is returning to the ring. So it'll be the former champ against the most recent challenger to the current champ, Adam Cole, taking on Valter. 10 minute time limit here in our, in our penultimate match and Cole fires out of the gate with the drop kick and it didn't even phase the giant Valter. Valter gave Kingston everything he could handle the trouble in paradise ends up putting the ring general away the same way it did to Adam Cole in episode two. Adam Cole had what ended up being, I've got, I got to do the math in my head here, a 10 day reign. He won it the Intercontinental Championship. Beautiful kick there. Won the Intercontinental Championship from Bobby Lashley at Nitro 9 and then lost it in episode two of Wednesday Night Storm to Kofi Kingston. 10 days with the title for Adam Cole. Didn't win a match. We haven't seen Bobby Lashley since then. He had held that, he had held that belt for almost four months coming into Nitro 9 when Cole beat him. Wow, Valter with the boot right into the corner and he's gonna go for the pin. Cole kicks out. So while this match isn't officially a number one contenders match, these are the two men that have really dominated the Intercontinental Championship scene 
for the past few months. These guys and Bobby Lashley, who again, we haven't seen since Nitro. So you gotta believe that the winner of this may very well get another shot at the champion Kofi Kingston, who I'm sure will have to defend at least one more time before Bash at the Beach. I mean, we understand how the Intercontinental Championship is in GAW, no rest for the champ. So we'll see what happens here. Adam Cole certainly has not been kind to Kofi Kingston on social media, calling him an undeserved champion, saying that Cole was actually injured when Kingston beat him for his title, which is why he took three weeks off after he lost. Well, now he's got a chance to prove himself. The challenge is daunting here against the ring general, Walter, and you can see the strength of the huge Austrian. Now Walter going for the pin. He lost to Kingston last week, trying to get another shot. Cole kicks out at one again. Walter also undeterred after a loss to the champ. Massive lariat there. Walter moves surprisingly fast for a man of his size. Cole goes underneath. Wow. Vaults over him. Again. And Walter manages to stop himself on the ropes. And immediately catches Cole in that gut wrench suplex. Whoa. What? The Usos. I don't understand. No one's... Oh, my God. I can't tell. Is that Jimmy? He's got a bat. He just mashes Walter. Wow. This... I. Oh, wow. I mean... You're, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> you're talking about... I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm utterly speechless right now what the reason for that may have been, and it barely even made a dent in Valter. I, th I think that was Jimmy Uso, I want to say. I didn't quite get a good enough look. Now Valter might be feeling the effects of a baseball bat shot to the head. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Valter hoisting Cole up. Cole turns the power bomb into a sunset bomb of his own. Cole trying to pin Valter after the attack. Valter kicks out. Wow, I really don't know what is going on with, with this. I mean, the Intercontinental Championship scene is always absolute chaos because everybody knows how often the champion has to defend. So people realize that they have a chance to win this title. Cole with that sliding knee. And now it looks like a guy who's primarily just been a tag team wrestler in GAW now maybe putting his hat in the ring for the, for the Intercontinental Championship. Cole forces his way out of that, turns around and eats the lariat from Valter. That's got to be it. No! Adam Cole kicks out of the massive lariat from the ring general. And you got to think maybe that Walter did not put the amount of power on that that he would normally after having suffered the attack from Jimmy Uso earlier. But he plants Cole with that power bomb. One of the most brutal power bombs in all of wrestling. Got him in the gut wrench again. Gut wrench bomb. We saw him use that to great effect against the champion, Kofi Kingston, when he picked up a pinfall on the champ a couple weeks ago. Now he's trying to do the same to Adam Cole here. Two, three. The gut wrench bomb was enough. The attack from Jimmy Uso was not. The ring general, Walter. Wow. Wow, unbelievable, unbelievable what we've seen in this match. We've got several questions to be answered. Not only the Bianca Belair attack on champion Asuka that we saw earlier, but now 
What could the Usos want? Or is this a concerted decision by both of them? Has one of them gone rogue? I'm not sure, although we may have a chance to find out. We are hearing that it's Jimmy Uso standing by backstage to explain his actions. Here's the thing, man. This isn't about making sure Walter loses. We don't give a damn who wins that match. Next week, the Usos are going to finally get the GAW Tag Team Championships, but it's about more than that. No tag team in the last decade has ever ran the show in tag and singles. And it's the Usos' time now, baby. Lucha Brothers, we'll see you next week. And Walter, Kofi, Joe, we'll see you around. Well, you heard it there from Jimmy Uso. The Usos wanting to stake their claim in both the tag team and singles divisions of GAW. But from one championship with a ton of drama to the world championship that has had so much drama since Nitro when Samoa Joe took this title off the legendary AJ Styles. Joe himself has not been attacked. He hasn't been physically assaulted. But we've seen all four of the men that were supposed to compete to be the number one contender be assaulted either physically or uh, their interviews tampered with by a masked man who last week announced that he would make his presence known. He would reveal his identity in a match against the champ. The title's not on the line, but the identity of the man will be revealed, I hope. Whoa! No way! You gotta be kidding me. Wow. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. The man had long hair. We knew that. Matt Hardy. He doesn't come out in the mask that he's been donning the last few weeks. Matt Hardy. Wow, I don't know what to say. He's the man that's been attacking wrestlers over the past month. Alistair Black, Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega have all fallen victim to this man. Still popular amongst the fans. Title is not on the line. Between Samoa Joe and Matt Hardy, it is a normal match with a 10-minute time limit. The fans still love Matt Hardy even after his actions. Samoa Joe has no love for the Woken One. I think that much is clear. And the submission machine... Well, he is just that. He is a legendary champion in TNA. And he's looking to make his claim as a legendary champion in GAW. Wow, Joe, beautiful. Overhead suplex. Now going for the Dragon Sleeper. They call him the Submission Machine for a reason. But he wasn't going for one there. I think he was just looking to work on the neck of Matt Hardy. We have seen Matt Hardy already, of course, in episode one of Wednesday Night Storm. Hardy and his brother Jeff made a return to compete in the tag team title tournament, and they lost their first match. But apparently Hardy's been planning this ever since. Hardy going for the pin on the champion. So you have to assume that should Hardy win this match, he will get a chance at Bash of the Beach to win the World Championship. Side effect from Matt Hardy. That takes a lot to raise up a man the size of Samoa Joe. Wow. Alistair Black, of course, we saw him 
come back and win his first match back after an attack by this man. Hardy clotheslining Joe over the top. We have yet to hear from Kenny Omega or Cody Rhodes. We have finally gotten in touch with Kazuchika Okada, although Okada has won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. He was in Japan, if you'll remember, weeks ago. And in a virtual interview with us, it was cut off. We had a picture of the man who we now know to be Matt Hardy tampering with the technology that got us Kazuchika Okada's interview. We finally heard from him, and yes, he's won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, so he will be in Japan for the immediate future. Hardy with the suplex now on Joe. Remember, 15 second count outs in GAW. We give guys a little bit more leniency. Matt Hardy won't need it though. I can't get over that it's Matt Hardy who has been doing this. I mean, we haven't known him to be the kind of man who would, and now Hardy, twist of fate on the champ. Hardy looking to pin champion Samoa Joe. And he kicks out. Samoa Joe kicking out of the twist of fate. But now Hardy going to keep the pressure up. Looking for it again. And Joe catches his foot that time. Working over Hardy. Straight into the cross face from the submission machine. That is brutal. Look at how much he's cranking back on Matt Hardy. Is Hardy going to be able? He just manages to get Joe's hands off of his head. But you got to feel the damage was probably done from that. What do you think is going through the mind of Samoa Joe right now? He and Hardy have faced off in the past in GAW and elsewhere. And now Hardy, twist of fate from the second rope. Avalanche twist of fate from Matt Hardy. That's got to be enough to put away the champion. No! Samoa Joe somehow kicks out of the avalanche twist of fate. You're seeing why this man is a champion. It took him a year. A year plus to work up to this level to become world champion. And you're seeing why. Matt Hardy taking it straight to the submission machine. But Joe still staying in this match. You wonder if mentally maybe Samoa Joe is just not with it. Not expecting the man who's been attacking all, all of his potential contenders to be Matt Hardy. I can't say what's going through the mind of Samoa Joe. Now hoist Matt Hardy up, power bomb, going straight into the pin, stacks him up. Joe looking to put away Hardy, and he does. Well, that's that then. Matt Hardy had been the man who was attacking potential number one contenders. And Samoa Joe puts him away. So where does Hardy go from here, I wonder? He kicks out. Samoa Joe kicks out of the avalanche twist of fate. Wow. The champion showing what he's worth. Didn't even need the Coquina clutch. Samoa Joe, the champion. And what happens to Matt Hardy? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on Wednesday night. Oh my God, it wasn't Matt Hardy. It was not Matt Hardy. The masked man is back. It's Jay White, the Blade Runner.